Hello, my name is Javier Rodriguez, and I'm going to tell you about uh, an AI project we've done in CDX to help you find root cause of user experience problems very fast. So why are we doing it? Troubleshooting is a hard problem. It takes a lot of time. You need to have the right data. You need to instrument the, the measurement, maybe packets, maybe flows, maybe CDX data from clients and CSQL Cloud, you need to have knowledge of the field, you need to have experience troubleshooting, you need to have a good methodology, you need to have a good eye, you need to have passion because you're going to have to invest time looking at your theory, very fun if it's correct. So it takes time, right? How much time? Well, it depends, but some customers tell, tell us weeks, days. Um, with CDX, um, our experts may find problems in 30 minutes looking at the metrics, maybe one hour, maybe two hours, depending on the problem. So why not use AI and accelerate this process dramatically to provide the analysis in a matter of seconds? Time is very valuable. So that's what we've done uh, in, uh, in CDX. So what is it? Uh, it's really an machine learning engine that looks at everything in CDX and outputs the top factors of the root cause, the most likely factors for the <clears throat> problem. Um, we look at many things in, uh, in the analysis. We look at multiple applications, not just the one we selected. We look at the, the multiple users. We look at the regions and the time. Uh, we look at the vicinity of the problem when it happened. And the goal is to provide the output. We've also included uh, uh, an additional mode called comparison mode so that when the output of the AI is not good enough, maybe you don't trust it, uh, maybe it's wrong, we still need to find the root cause and that basically means coming back to the methodology which typically includes comparing before and after what happened when the problem was not existing, good score versus when it's a bad score. And that takes a lot of time comparing MAC addresses, comparing SSIDs, etc. Uh, so how are we doing it? Uh, we added three modes in, in CDX uh, as part of the Y engine. The first one is single point mode where I click on a, on a point score and the system will tell me what's going on. We can select the range of time and it's going to tell me what's going on during that time. And when I don't like the analysis, I will use the comparison mode. So this is a slide that shows uh, how easy it is to use the single point analysis. It's just clicking on a bad score point, click the analyze uh, score button, and then the AI is gonna run. I'll show you a demo at the end. In a matter of seconds, I have my output, and the output shows me the top factors, a little bit of explanation what's going on, and there is also a supervised um, feedback uh, loop for our supervised learning. It's important to know that although I click on a point in time, the AI looks around that time because there may be tips uh, around that point in time that help us uh, inc increase the accuracy and precision of the uh, root cause analysis. So for that, we look at multiple users, not just the one. We look at multiple applications, not just the one that I selected. We look at all the cloud paths, the device metrics, device events, interface names, DNS, etc. And then we output uh, the factors. So in this case, on the second factor, high transit latency, it's basically saying there is higher latency than normal between the CSKL cloud and the application. And uh, this idea of intelligent context aware or looking at the vicinity exactly means this, right? So I select this point here that you can see in my slide. And at that point in time, the latency was okay. It was 29 milliseconds. However, a little bit later, the latency is spiked. And you can see here in the cloud path that is precisely between the CSKL cloud and the application. So this is what, what I mean by intelligent context aware. We look around. So when you want to explain the output of the wine agent or understand it, please look around and, and uh, that's gonna make it more meaningful. So we included this uh, feedback, feedback loop mechanism 
to increase our supervised learning uh, precision. If you don't agree with our analysis, you can tell us what you think is the right analysis, even with a free text um, uh, form. And we're going to look at that with our engineers and uh, that's going to come back into the supervised learning model and increase the accuracy. That's also another way to adjust the Y engine for your network if you, find, if you have something different than other customers. So that's going to help you also there. The comparison mode, as I said, we can select two points in time through the duration of our data retention. And then uh, the system is going to look at those points and it's going to output what are the differences. It's like a diff mode. And uh, we're going to see the differences in the application, in the network, and in the device metrics. It's um, grouped. First, we provide the summary of the main, the most important uh, factors in, 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 and the differences. We also give you a visualization of both cloud paths, which is going to help us quickly eyeball what is the difference. In this case, it's just before the application. And then we give you all the details and uh, for every metric that we collect, what's different. The final mode we added, we call it the range mode where we look at the window in time. And then once we analyze, we output the top two most common problems. In this case, it's an application issue and a Wi-Fi issue. When you click on, on one of those factors, you're also gonna see in time these blue circles showing exactly when it happened during the, the time selection. So let me tell you about a little bit of the technical um, design and considerations we took. So in terms of the use cases we wanted to solve, we initially focused in four and we ended up covering 13 initially. Uh, we certainly wanted to cover the most common scenarios that our customers were telling were happening, such as ISP and Wi-Fi issues, which are 80% of the times the problem when not working from the office. As the time evolves, we're going to add more use cases and we have a, a big list of things we want to detect and, and put the AI to work on. We had two main design principles. The first one is that we wanted it to be explainable AI. And that means we find the issue, we can explain why we think that's the issue, and then we can recommend a solution. We wanted to avoid techniques like Lura Nethers, which is very hard to explain why a layer is doing a, a decision. Um, we are also leveraging the knowledge of field experts, people with experience in troubleshooting that have wood methodology. So we try to incorporate the rule of thumb, what makes sense, the good troubleshooting methodology in our expert system. And we also wanted to add what's impossible. If I show in New York, if I live in New York and suddenly I show in Singapore, in five minutes later, that's not possible yet to travel that fast. So we're able to detect that and incorporate it into the AI. The system uh, high level view is, uh, is shown, depicted here. Uh, the first thing we did was manual labeling. We had a lot of problems and we troubleshooted over the, over the past and that created uh, our labeled data set for the supervised learning. I like to call it C-Scale Mechanical Turk. And then we use a lot of AI models. The next slide is going to tell you what we're using. Uh, we do clustering. We look at the interesting events. We look. We do use uh, graph theory uh, to find relationships. And we're doing active learning with this uh, supervised uh, feedback loop from the experts. I like to say that uh, our AI engine, the Y engine, uses AI techniques, but also human intelligence techniques or expert knowledge and this is um, what we built um, i like um, the venn um, diagram that uh, ian godfellow put in the deep learning book because it shows how ai is a superset of machine learning we're using expert systems and we're using a lot of machine learning techniques such as the ones uh, you can see here in, in the slide and the the recommendation we're we're building it's, it has three phases the first one is static which is the current system we want to do semi-automatic and eventually we want to do uh, full remediation which is part of our vision however we're going to give you the recommendation system because the customers told us i want to click the button tell me 
what's the problem the solution but i want to click the button this is a very interesting uh, philosophical concept where for us humans having more data for the troubleshooting process makes it for sure more time consuming uh, and probably more confusion you need to correlate more things however for the machine more data more signals results in much better analysis so that's the power of machine learning and also obviously it makes sense to use it in, in this uh, problem um, our customers also said hey i want to know when my tunnel to the circular cloud flaps i want to know when there is connectivity problems or flapping so we are also as part of the ai engine we are also consuming all the device events that you can see today in CDX, we're consuming a lot of performance counters from our uh, nodes, from our CSCaler uh, nodes. And uh, we are also looking at the score, the NS trends, and all the errors that we can collect in CDX. Then we look at the legs, our abstractions of connectivity between the client to the internet, between the internet to the CSCaler cloud and to the app. And we're looking at things like tunnel changes, tunnel downgrades. Uh, sleep cycles of the machine uh, because that affects uh, also the connectivity network connect disconnects vpn a lot of uh, elements on the on the ssid and then the wi-fi section and then we're also looking at the isps for the isps remember that we've also launched what we call isp insights which is another engine uh using ai that looks at the big picture looks at problems in ISPs that affect many users. And we're looking at two types of problems, connectivity problems and performance degradation, which are harder to detect using our the number of millions of users that we already have. That's looking at the big picture. This uh, engine that, that I've just shown you, we decided to start from the bottom up, from a user problem. A user creates a ticket, I need to understand what's going on. The root cause is initially thought for that, and then we're also, obviously we're going to build, look at multiple users and look at the big picture too, combining the intelligence of both engines. Our end goal is to pivot from a score, which is kind of an indication that there is a problem, to really detecting real problems with the cause and with the remediation. So it's going to avoid noise and it's going to provide even faster uh, time to analysis and remediation. So before I cut, let me show you a quick demo. Hopefully this didn't time out. So I have here one of our system with a user that is having a bad score in Microsoft Teams. So when I click on one of these points, <coughs> I get the button analyze the score. When I click it in a matter of seconds, the AI should output the result. As you saw, it's a matter of seconds, much faster than with CDX. You can spend 30 minutes in uh, super SEs, maybe one hour, two hours, depending on the complexity of the problem, to a matter of seconds. Now the thing is, do I agree with this or not? As I said before, you can use the feedback uh, icons for the supervised learning if you don't agree. But in this case, showing first device uh, CPU problem, we come down, obviously it's gonna be high CPU, the second one is talking about high uh, DNS, you can see here, and if I come to the DNS graph, uh, which is here, precisely on the point that I clicked, it's kind of okay, it's 200, but then just after it, it went spike. So remember, intelligent context aware, and that's how we do. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show you, and thanks a lot for watching.